let's have a look at question two in this video. So suppose that the production function is given by this one and the price of labor and capital are given by wage equal one, interest equal two. What's going to be the cost function in the long run? Now, what do we know about the long run? We know that in the long run, the firms is going to maximize the values of the labor and the capital in such a way that at the margin for the last unit, the product that they give, the product that they get from the labor is going to be the same product that they get from the capital. In other words, we are going to have our equilibrium condition that the marginal product from labor relative to how much we pay for it relative to the wage is equal to the marginal product of the capital relative to the interest that we're going to pay for that. Now, this is our condition in the equilibrium. We need the marginal products and the marginal products are going to be the derivatives of the production function. This is our production function over here. So first we need the marginal products, the marginal products with respect to labor. It means we're differentiating the function, the production function with respect to labor. So this one derivative with respect to with respect to labor. Now labor is the variable. Everything else is the constant. So we have three times K to the power two over three times L to the power one over three derivative with respect to labor. We'll just take the power down and we have L to the power of one over three minus one. Now, if we work out the math over here, we can see that three and three cancels out. So we would have K to the power two over three times L to the power of minus two over three. So we got one marginal product. Now with the same logic, we have to find out the marginal product with respect to capital. So let's do it here below the marginal product with respect to capital, meaning we're going to take this function and differentiate that with respect to capital, meaning the capital is the variable. Everything else is a constant. So let's write the constants first, which is three times the labor to the power one over three. And we're differentiating K to the power two over three. So we take the power down times K to the power of two over three minus one. Now, again, let's work out the math here and cancel out three and three. We would have uh, let's write two first, the constant times L to the power one over three times K to the power of negative one over three. So we have the marginal products. We know the wage and the interest from the question. They're given as one and two. Let's substitute this into our long run equilibrium and see what we get because we should have a relationship between capital and labor. So let's do that. Let me zoom out to get some more space here. Now let's keep it like that to have the big picture. So we know what we're doing. Let's write it over here. The marginal product with respect to labor, we found out to be the following. So let's write it K to the power two over three uh, times L to the power of minus two over three divided by the wage, which is equal to one, which is equal to one equals to the marginal product with respect to capital, which is this two times L to the power one over three times K to the power minus one over three divided by the interest, which is two, which is two. Let's do a cross product, see what we get. So if we do a cross product over here, um, just a second, actually, first of all, let's cancel two and two. So two and two go away. And now we can our cross product. It's going to make it simpler. We can multiply in the cross and we would have K to the power two over three times L to the power minus two over three is equal to L to the power one over three times K to the power of negative um, one over three. What can we do now? We can take, we can take the K on one side and the L on the other side. So we would have K to the power, K to the power of two over three divided by K to the power of negative one over three equals to L to the power one over three divided by L to the power of negative two over three. So we have division with the same basis. We're going to work with the powers only in here. We have K to the power two over three minus minus one over three. That's two over three plus one over three, which is three over three, which is one. And here we will have L to the power of one over three minus minus two over three, which is one over three plus two over three, which is three over three, which is again one. So what we can see is that K equals to L. Now with this relationship in mind, we can substitute it into our production function because we want to find out what is capital and labor in terms of quantity, because we're looking for the cost function and the cost function has to be a function of quantity of the quantity supplied. Now, uh, production function is going to equal to three times L to the power one over three times 
Instead of capital, we said we can substitute labor from this condition. So if we write instead of capital labor again, it's going to be labor to the power 2 over 3. So it's 3 times labor to the power of 1. Because 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3 is 3 over 3, and that's 1. Quantity equals to 3 times labor. What's labor in terms of quantity? Because that's our goal, that's what we're looking for. Labor in terms of quantity is Q divided by 3. And because labor is equal to capital, that's also going to equal to our capital. So that's equal to our capital as well. Now we have the labor and capital in terms of quantity. That's almost uh, the problem solved. But we also have to take into account the payments for the capital and labor, the input prices, which is the wage and the interest. So we'll take that into account to calculate our total cost function. Let me be, go here. Uh, yes. Now, the total cost function in the long run is going to be the interest that we pay for the capital and the wage that we pay for the labor. So the interest that we pay for the capital is equal to one is equal to two is equal to two. So total cost equals to two times the capital capital. We just found it to be Q over three Q over three and the wage is equal to one times the labor, which is also Q over three. So we're adding. 2q over 3 plus q over 3. We're having 2q over 3 plus q over 3. We're adding two fractions with the same denominator, which means we can add the numerators. 2q plus q divided by 3, which is equal to 3q divided by 3. And now we can cancel out the 3s. We can cancel out the 3. And the total cost is equal to just q. And that's it. And we are done.